السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Allah is whom we praise, we praise him and we thank him and we seek refuge in him from the evil of our own souls and the evil of our actions. Whomsoever he guides, none can misguide him and whomsoever he leads astray, none can guide to the truth. And I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship but God Almighty alone and that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his slave and messenger. It is narrated from Adi ibn Hatim radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Bukhari that he came to the Prophet وسلم, after coming from travel in the north of Arabia, which was an area that was known for its lawlessness, for highway robbers and danger. And so he said to him, Ya Adi, al -hira? Have you seen the city of Al Hira? He said, I've only heard of it, O Messenger of Allah. I've never seen it. He said, If you live long, you're going to see the city of Hira. And you're going to see the caravans leaving from Al Hira, making it all the way safely to Mecca and to the south of Arabia, having no one to fear but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you were to live long, then you will also witness the opening of Persia and the treasures and the storehouses of its emperor being divided. And if you were to live long, then you will see a time when a man will have so much money that he will walk to the streets with a handful of gold and he will find no one to be able to give it to. Adi ibn Hatim Adi ibn Hatim anhu, he was narrating this hadith to his students 
And he said, I have lived long enough. I indeed saw the caravans that left Hira and made it to Mecca safely. safely. And I was there on the day when the treasures of Khusro, the emperor of Persia, were opened up and divided amongst the poor. And, I, and if you all live long enough, then you will too come to see the third, which I have not seen, which is the money that will be given out and no one will be found to take it. I mentioned this hadith because before we talked about the long arc of history and our place as Muslims in history. Our place in Muslims as history is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described us. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا it is thus that we have made you a middle ground nation so that you may be witnesses over mankind and that the messenger will be a witness for or against you. Being a witness means that you are just, you are accurate, and you are not swayed by popular opinion and popular sentiment. If we don't live by our values, then we will face the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the, di- on the day of judgment and he will be a witness against us for not having lived up to the revelation that he was entrusted with and conveyed to us faithfully. And then we will answer for our deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's narrated from Abu Musa al-Ash'ari in the Sunan, in the Sahih, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, inna bayna yidayya sa'ati fitanan ka qita'in layl al-mudlim. Before the Day of Judgment, there will come trials and tribulations like dark pieces of sky falling. يُصْبِحُ الرَّجُلُ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِي كَافِرًا وَيُمْسِي مُؤْمِنًا وَيُصْبِحُ كَافِرًا A man will wake up in the morning a believer and will disbelieve before the evening. He will make it to the evening as a believer and he will disbelieve before the morning. الْقَاعِدُ فِيهَا خَيْرٌ مِنَ الْمَاشِي خَيْرٌ مِنَ الْقَائِمِ وَالْقَاعِدُ فِيهَا خَيْرٌ مِنَ الْقَاعِدِ وَالْقَاعِدُ فِيهَا وَالْقَائِمُ فِيهَا خَيْرٌ مِنَ الْمَاشِي وَالْمَاشِي فِيهَا خَيْرٌ مِنَ السَّاعِي He said the person who sits during these times of fitna is better than the one that stands. And the one that stands is better than the one that walks. And the one that walks is better than the one that runs. Al-Imam Shams al-Din or Shams al-Haq al-Azim Abadi he said about this that this refers to a person not involving themselves in this fitna and being pulled one way or the other by them but instead living according to the principles that they know about Islam and the way that a Muslim should act. And so with that given that we are very shortly away from an election. And in an election year, it seems that all we have is crisis. The only thing that we hear about is crisis or charismatic figures that tell us which way to go and which way to think and who to join and who to follow and what, polis- po- what party to follow. So we have all of these things that are pushing the Overton window one way or the left one way or the other trying to get us to go right or left, trying us to join all of these different parties, none of them having grounding in what Allah and His Messenger want from us. I am personally against religious organizations and religious figures endorsing political candidates. I am personally against religious organizations and religious figures endorsing political candidates and political parties. That is not our job. Our job is to teach the community how to think about these things, how to make decisions with the appropriate values and with the appropriate, appropriate conscience, how to make decisions that will be pleasing to Allah in line with the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that will maximize benefit and minimize harm. And so because of that, I want to talk about three major points today. Number one is why to vote or not to. Number two is what sort of person or party to vote for. And number three are the communities 
of our priority. Our, what priorities do we have in our community? Number one, I need to say that if you choose not to vote, you have done nothing wrong. Sometimes it's better to sit things out and see where the chips fall. See where the pieces land. You cannot be blameworthy, and it is not a wajib for you to vote in any situation. It's not a mandate that you involve yourself in anything as long as you are doing what you are supposed to be doing to care for yourself and your family and your loved ones during the time of fitna, during the time of trial. As is reported from the Prophet ﷺ that he said, Fitna to rajuli fi malihi wa ahlihi wa awladihi yukafiruha as salatu wa siyamu wa sadaqatu wal amru wa nahi. A man's trials and tribulations will come in his family and his wealth and his children. They will be expiated by prayer and fasting and ordering the good and forbidding the evil and giving sadaqa. Therefore, when you stick to the fundamentals of your Islam, and you know what your values are as a Muslim. You know when to involve yourself and when not to involve yourself. There's a principle in the Sharia that when there are more than one acts of harm that come at one time, if you're able to avoid all of those harms, then you should. And if not, then you go and you choose the lesser of the two harmful principles. As the principle in the Sharia is la darara. There should be no harm nor reciprocating harm. There should be no harm nor reciprocating harm. But if you do vote, then you should not be voting for a party because that party is the ultimate truth. You should not be voting down a party line because of your undying allegiance to that because anyone who gives allegiance to other than Allah and his messenger has, added, has committed an act of kufr has committed an act of oppression and has gone against their values as a Muslim. When you uphold a system that is man-made over the system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, over the values and the beliefs that Allah has given you, then you have committed an act of disbelief. And you might say to yourselves, how can that be? We've heard so much from people in the news and people in the, in the community that we have to be good as citizens. Yes, we have to be, a good, we have to be good citizens. There's no contradiction between being a good Muslim and being a good citizen. But ask any of any, anyone of any faith and they will tell you the kingdom of God comes before the kingdom of man. If the kingdom of man legislates that I do something which goes against my faith, then my faith in God comes first. I don't make myself subservient to anyone except for my creator. If, however, you do choose to vote, then you're going to be voting in one of two ways. You're going to be voting because you see that there is a benefit that can be obtained, or you see that there is a harm that should be averted. If you see that there is a benefit that could be obtained, then that benefit needs to be in line with our values as Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, about the Prophet Shu'aib, in Surah Hud, from verses 88 to 89, in Urid al-Islaha mastata'at, I only want to correct things as much as I can. Therefore, the role of the Muslim following the examples of the messengers is to do that will be best for themselves and for others in the situation that they find themselves in. And so you may say to yourself, I'm going to vote because I'm able to find some benefit for myself and for others. Or you might say to yourself, you know what? This vote is going to be a vote of objection, a vote of dissent, a vote to punish those who have been harming others and remove them from office. And in that you have a precedent that the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يستطع فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يستطع فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَضَعْفُ الْإِيمَانِ and whoever sees evil from amongst you, then he should change it with his, his hand. And if he cannot, then with his tongue. And if he cannot, then with his heart. And that is the lowest of faith. But you should also know that when you are choosing between the evils that you want to be able to eliminate, that you want to be able to remove, the harm that you want to be able to stop, if there is an absolute harm that is ongoing, it is not sensible to then try and remove it or to, to remove a harm that is only assumed. Let's say, for example, you come across a small child being attacked by a dog. 
One dog is actively biting the child, and the other dog is sitting in wait. Do you go and kick the dog that's sitting in wait, or do you stop the dog which is attacking the child? You stop the dog that's attacking the child. That other dog might not attack. It might attack. It might run away. You can't take the vun, the insurity or the uncertainty of what that other dog is going to do and say, no, that's more important than saving the life of this child who is actively being harmed. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَرِسَالِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ ذَمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ وَإِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. As for the type of person that you should be voting for, then it's very important for you to understand that if a person is placed in a situation or in a position of power, then you have to look at their personal character, but most importantly, you have to look at their performance in the office. Therefore, a person who is just and trustworthy. even if they are personally sinful, is better than a person who is unjust and untrustworthy, even though they project that they are pious or that they are good. Additionally, as the Prophet ﷺ said, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَتِهِ Each of you is a shepherd, and each of you will be asked about your flock. Do you find that person? Do you find that person or that party or that group Promoting things that harm society at large for the greatest amount of people, or do you find them, and for the greatest amount of people around the world, or do you find them promoting things that, great, that cause the most benefit for people, both at home and abroad? Minimizing harm and maximizing benefit has to be what we think about. The sanctity of faith, of family, of life, and of livelihood have to be the things that we think about. And lastly, and we'll end on this, way too long in our community, we have focused on two things that have not gotten us much clout or, 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 or ability to make change. We focused a lot of interfa on interfaith, and we focused a lot on political activism. But with the troubles that we've seen, we haven't seen any benefit from those. Where social services touching the hearts of the people that we live amongst, Doing real actions and, and, and real benefit for people in society needs to be our priority other than just lip service to people that we're the same as you. No. We've come with something better. We've come with something that can benefit. We've come to so with something that will help our fellow man. And then, instead of political activism, we all know that money is the oil that runs the machine. We need economic strength. That which will allow us to not be held back in stating what our values are because we're indebted to others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be those that focus on what is beneficial to ourselves and to others. Allahumma ghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma inna zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al-khasirin. اللهم انصر اخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان، اللهم انصر اخواننا المستضعفين في غزه والسودان ولبنان، اللهم انصرهم على عدوهم وعدوك يا رب العالمين. اللهم اكتب لهم النصر والسلامه يا رب العالمين. اللهم اهدنا واهد ابائنا وابنائنا وامهاتنا وبناتنا واجدادنا وجداتنا وزملائنا وجيراننا يا رب العالمين في هذا المجتمع خاصه وجميع المجتمعات عامه يا رب العالمين. عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله العزيز الجليل يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة